gosh, I would have expected Cosmo to act nicer toward the prosecutor who literally sentenced his father to death. Hold it! You are investigating the inspector? What on earth for? I am not at liberty to say. Sorry? I'd identified a distinct possibility that Gregson was involved in the case I was investigating. Regrettably, though, he was killed before I could secure the proof I needed. Is the court to understand, then, that on the day in question you followed the victim to the scene? No, I was privy to his movements in advance. How? I stole into his office in the yard and consulted his diary. The address on Fresno Street was noted in the 5 p.m. entry. You illegally entered the man's office? In Japan, that alone would constitute a very serious offense. As it does in Great Britain, I assure you. Is that not the case, Lord Van Zeeks? I was aware of the possibility of the possible consequences. So, in summary, you were investigating the victim, and yet you refused to tell the court why. I didn't realize British prosecutors enjoyed such freedom to choose what to divulge under oath. Ugh, why did I ever think I could defend this man? Hold it! Had you ever been to the address before? No, never. I only learned of the place as a result of my investigations into Gregson's activities. There was no light inside when I entered, so it was all but impossible to make out anything. But at 5 p.m. the sun would have only just the sun would only just have gone down. It would still have been reasonably light outside. The room has a window, but it was boarded shut. Very little light found its way into the room from outside, so it was extremely murky inside. I wouldn't have noticed if the victim was already lying on the floor. There was no artificial light in the room, you say? You're quite sure? I'm quite sure that the part of the room where the body was found was very dark. I have a feeling there was a small oil lamp burning on the desk, though I couldn't say for certain. Look, Mr. Narahodo. There is a small desk in the room just here. Yes, I remember. And there was an oil lamp on it, as well as the framed photograph. When I entered the room, I closed the door behind me and started toward the, ve the desk to investigate. And what did you find? Nothing. I never actually reached the desk. So, who fired the gun? I have no idea. I didn't see anybody else in the room. But you say it was very dark in there. Yes, that's right. All I can tell you is I didn't sense another's presence. Uh, then could it be that the gunshot actually originated from somewhere outside the room? No, that's out of the question. Oh. Without doubt, the sound emanated from inside the room. I could smell the gunpowder. It's going from bad to worse. And you say that's the point at which you noticed the revolver on the floor? Correct. And I foolishly picked it up. That was carelessness on my part. Presumably, then, the gunshot you heard came from the firearm that you somewhat hastily took into your hands. In point of fact, my lord, I believe it did not. What? The barrel of the revolver I picked up was cold, and there was no smell of spent powder. Uh, but then where on earth is the gun that was fired? Whilst I would like to oblige you with an answer, I'm afraid I cannot. I too would dearly like to know that. 
Ugh. Hold it. Nothing to contradict so far. A man, you say? One of the witnesses, I presume. That's right. One of the street merchants working on Fresno Street. Who are these merchants? A number of them had set up their stalls directly beneath the boarded window of the crime scene. A match seller, a newsmonger, and a... A peddler. <laughs> a peddler, you say? They've all given statements saying they heard the gunshot. And without thought of danger, they ran inside to see what had happened. Yes, Gina told us about that yesterday, didn't she? They burst through the door with some force, it would seem. They did, and almost gave me a heart attack in the process. But you're supposed to be the Reaper. The first man to come in immediately noticed the revolver in my hand and fled. A policeman patrolling on Fresno Street heard the commotion and was able to arrest the accused shortly after the incident occurred. Anyway, the man's scream drew my attention in that direction. Alright, so either this is going to yield some more testimony, or else pressing on this is just going to progress the trial. Because there's nothing I can contradict in here. <laughs> um, and what may- in what- what do you mean by that? In what way did the body appear? I honestly can't explain it, but it's the truth. As far as I was concerned, the body hadn't been there. Haha. <sighs> Hadn't been there until that point, and then suddenly there it was. Did you perhaps hear the sound of the victim falling to the ground just beforehand? At that moment, what I heard was the sound of the door flying open and the scream of the man who came inside first. Nothing more. I see. After the man fled, I examined the body. I was stunned to find that it was Gregson. Hmm. Most curious circumstances indeed. How the inspector was killed, or how his body seemed to appear out of nowhere. I have no idea. Surely the court has heard enough. My lord. The cross-examination is clearly revealed. That the accused, Barak von Zeeks, is lying on multiple fronts. What? What is that supposed to mean? Good gracious, counsel. The defendant is lying, you say? In his testimony just now, he claims that he failed to notice the victim's body because the room was dark. That's correct. No, that's impossible. As proven by this candelabrum. How does that prove anything? It? It you examine? You mean if. If you examine the tip of the long candle, you can see it has been blown off by a powerful impact. One would assume that the projectile from the firearm passed through the victim and struck the candle. The problem comes when you consider the other two candles, which are clearly of a different length. Yes, I can see that only the only the candle that appears to have been struck by the bullet is long. We could reasonably expect someone to have lit all three candles together. Could we? I mean, that seems quite circumstantial. <laughs> Which begs the que- oh, now he's using the term begs the question incorrectly? <laughs> Send this guy back to Japan. Which begs the question of why only one has ended up longer than the others. That must be because that particular candle was extinguished when the others were still burning. Ah! That's right, when the candle was hit by the bullet, It obviously went out, but the other two candles would still have been burning. So the fact is, the victim's body would have been illuminated by the light still thrown by the candelabrum. 
and the accused claimed that he couldn't see the body clearly contradicts those facts. And now, to the next lie. There's more? The accused also claimed claims never to have visited the scene of the crime before. That's the truth. In that almost empty room, the police discovered something very unusual. A board, covered from top to bottom in police documents and newspaper cuttings. Yes, that's right, we saw it too. It goes without saying that the contents of the police documents cannot be divulged. However, they included a number of reports from various historical cases, the oldest of which was from ten years ago. Ten years ago? This is starting to sound familiar. And there is a common thread linking all of the documents on that board. Indeed, what is this common thread, Council? They all relate to cases prosecuted in court by Barak von Zeeks. All of them? And furthermore, all those cases are ones in which the defendant was acquitted. Good lord! Interestingly, none of those defendants are alive today, because all of them have been sent to their graves by the Reaper. Ah! Oh no! You don't know that! You don't know that a single one of those people died because of the Reaper. You don't even know that they were all killed by the same person. One of the guys died in a gazebo fire. That could have been from anything. In short, that dingy little room is the Reaper's secret hideout and his base of operations. The Reaper's hideout? And yet the Reaper would claim never to have been in his own secret hideout. No one would believe that. Truth is, we've been looking at this Gyaktend. We need to Kurikasu this Chesuban. Explain, Council. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine, by the Reaper's hand. What? Order, order, order. I thought you were all members of the judiciary. Don't you know how to conduct yourselves in court? I shouldn't have to bang my gavel even once. Very well. I hereby state the current opinion of the court. Beric von Zeeks is an outstanding prosecutor who has rendered great service to his country. However, it is with deep regret that I must concur with Prosecutor Asugi's contention that the defendant's testimony exhibits a number of stark incon inconsistencies with the known facts. We don't even have proof that the gunshot that was fired at 5 o'clock is the one that, that put out the candle. It could have been put out days ago. All I have done is state the truth as I know it. Cosmo's done a brilliant job. Uh, Cosmo's done a brilliant job as ever. He's drawing on his experience as a defense attorney to build his prosecution case, and it's formidable. Counsel, you will submit the board that you just showed the court as evidence. I believe it to be fundamental in establishing the facts surrounding the Reaper's existence. Thank you, my lord. Beedle-bum. And now the prosecution would like to call new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses who saw events unfold on the day in question. They were mentioned in the previous testimony, too, if you remember. <gasps> A bloody paw print! It's the Hound of the Baskervilles! Oh, what's this? Mr. Naruhodo, look! Oh, yes, it's a smudge of some kind. In fact, it looks just like a handprint. And the color... That's blood, isn't it? Oh dear, how disturbing. Always check the back. Also, always look at the ceiling. Gamers always look up. There are details on a whole raft of cases dating back years on here, aren't there? This paper from ten years ago is browning with age. Look, 
Out of interest, the most interesting, the most recent thing appears to be this newspaper cutting here. Oh, it's the same red-headed league advertisement that Mr. Sholmes had picked out. And do you remember? There was a red hairpiece at the scene, too. Was Inspector Gregson an, an exponent of the Redhead League then? Yes, the street sellers who heard the gunshot and went running into the room. Very well. Lead the witnesses in. The defendant may step down from the witness stand. Certainly, my lord. <laughs> A hundred pence? A hundred pence for what? What is he selling? Matches? Matches don't cost a hundred pence. So, witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court, and you'd better all have normal voices, because he tends sick and tired of it. Oh, gosh. You get stung by a bee? Na names? We don't use names. Too fancy for the likes of us. We're just free and easy. You could take the name. Sell what we like, live where we want to live. Oh, it's Beppo! I give them all a vacant stare as they walk down Fresno and spin a few words into a verse for them. Is that the symbol for a pence? Or a shilling? Or a pound? Or a pre-European currency standard conglomerate unit? Ah. Would I be right in assuming that all three of you make your living selling wares on the street? <laughs> Everyone calls me Gossip. I sell jaunty little titbits to passers-by, you know. <laughs> jaunty little titbits? Got an absolute smasher for you, sir. Right up your, right, right up my ginnel. Oh, my. <laughs> yes, the, the P-E-C-S-C-U. One of those. Put one of those in his tin cup, and he'll be rich. Right up your ginnel it is. Sixpence? Do I look like I'm made of lemons? I don't have sixpence to spare. What is a ginnel? Northern English. Nor Northern English dialect, a narrow passageway between buildings. Right up Main Street. No, Main Street is wide. A ginnel is very narrow. Sixpence is the price, and not a penny less. Wait, you, you're actually trying to sell it to me now? Oh, come on, sir. Don't tell me you're not interested. Try the man. Give him the money and see what it is. Pay the man, counsel. Uh, 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 all right, all right. Sixpence it is. You won't regret it, sir. Now you got your listening ears on? Just between us, a young couple on Slate Street just had twins. Uh, is that it? No, that's not it. It's gossip, isn't it? It wants to spread. That bit's up to you and your mouth, of course. I got more, you know. Want another juicy one? Sixpence a piece it is, if you're curious. I am curious, yes, about, about going, wait. I am curious, yes, about what's going on just under that fat bottom lip of yours. Namely, that unusual bruise or whatever it is that's poking out from under your collar. What about the next witness then? What name do you go by? And what do you sell? Me? I'm Venus. That's what everyone calls me. Funny, isn't it? Oh, double A batteries. Oh, okay. I sell these lovely little fireworks to all the little school kids. Sixpence a pop. What do you say? Alright, we can just wait here. Wait here for a bit. 
Didn't count on that, did you? Didn't count on me not pressing the space bar. And now you're gonna explode. Pretty stupid of you. Oh, she was fine. You weren't exaggerating with Whittle. Do they actually sell? Oh yeah. The second years can't get enough of my Venus firecrackers. Especially when I tell them that if they get a hundred, they could blow up the school. Uh, not the most savory of ideas, young lady. What do you say then, eh? Want to part with sixpence for a pop? That, that sounds dirty. I'm beginning to suspect you don't actually sell firecrackers, and this is a front for prostitution. You want me to buy one? Tell you what, I'll let you in on a little secret. If you get a hundred of them, you could blow up the whole courtroom. Try the woman. Give her the money and see if she's right. Pay the woman, counsel. All right, I'll buy one. Lovely stuff. Right then, this is a bit something a bit extra just for you. The Venus special, only six hundred pence. Sit six hundred. It's a hundred of my regular fireworks. Nothing little about that, is there? There'd be nothing little about the punishment if I blew up the old Bailey, either. What? Oh, did somebody hear a firecracker go off and think it was a gunshot? How silly. Wait, if they if they set a hundred of them off, it wouldn't sound like a gunshot. It would sound like a hundred firecrackers, unless they timed it very specifically. <gasps> Is OK Go the murderer? And the last witness. What name do you go by and what do you sell? I'm a thinker, me. Think all sorts of thoughts. Quick thinks all thoughts is what they call me. I think, therefore I am. I am, therefore I think. I think. Because I stand there on the street, watching the world go on about me, they call me the Observator. Get out of it, old man. Everyone calls you Sandwich. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> so, you don't actually sell anything. A problem shared is a problem halved, as they say. I give advice, I do, and I, th I think what it means. I don't actually sell anything. No, come to think of it. Pity. No more purchases today, please. Well, we have quite a cast here, it seems. They conduct their business on Fresno Street from morning until night, my lord, and always in the same place, directly adjacent to the crime scene. I see. And thus they heard the gunshot, I suppose. Not only that, but they very bravely ran inside to see what was going on and witnessed the crime. I'll be beggared, though, I thought, just between us. Venus de Milo, what am I to do? What a terrible thing I saw! What I think is... If all what we see is light and shadow playing with our eyes, is any of it real? <laughs> the end is nigh. I knew what you meant. I hope whatever people throw at me is edible and or valuable. And or not a firecracker. Not a lit firecracker, anyway. Unlit firecrackers can be exchanged for goods and services. The court will hear the formal testimony of these three witnesses now. You will describe in detail what you witnessed and heard at the time of the incident. We saw the whole thing from start to finish, we did. Everything from the moment they went into the building. It was less than a minute after the Reaper had gone inside that we all heard a big bang. Seems to me that quick to talk is quick to walk. Gossip couldn't wait to go and see what had happened. I ran into the room and there he was, the Reaper, gun in hand, standing over the dead body. I was scared after death, me, so I ran off to find a copper. If these witnesses were there the whole day and saw everything, who did they see going inside the building? Only the victim, Inspector Gregson, and the accused, Barrack Von Zeeks. I've seen pictures of that Reaper in the paper. I know what he looks like. And 
Just between us, folk love stories like this. I've made myself a tidy sum already. But wait, the room was just one of several flats in the building. Someone from another flat could have done it. All those flats on Fresno Street are unoccupied. Of course they are. They're small, damp, dirty, and expensive to boot. Too many windows. Window taxes through the roof. Especially because of the windows on the roof. The room in which the inspector was found is the only property in the building that's currently leased. And we know the leaseholder's name, don't we? It's Hugh Boone. Hmm. The testimony the court has just heard would appear to leave little room for doubt. It's becoming increasingly difficult to see how anyone other than the defendant could have committed the crime. Now! Thank you for your candor, my lord. Counsel for the defense, you may proceed to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes, my lord. In a closed court like this, without a jury, the judge is the only person whose opinion matters. I have to break down this testimony, somehow. say they? Who do you mean exactly? Inspector Gregson and the defendant, Lord Van Zeeks? I suppose so. The likes of us don't know the names of the high and mighty. But I'll tell you one thing, it was the old reaper that went in last, that's for sure and certain. Just behind Inspector Gregson, did they arrive at the same time as each other? No, no, not at all. The first fellow must have gone inside a good 15 minutes before we heard that gunshot. All right, I'll catch you later, Serp. Thanks for stopping by. The victim arrived 15 minutes before. You sure about that? Am I sure? Am I sure? Does it seem likely that I've forgotten a fellow with bright red hair like that, does it? Yeah, his hair really were red, weren't it? Redder than my flaming fireworks, even. That, that fiery red mop still burnt on the inside of my eyelids, it is. Wait a minute, you're saying the man was a redhead? Weren't you listening, chum? Aye, he was a redhead, and he had a big trunk with him as well. But Inspector Gregson's hair isn't red, not by any stretch of the imagination. It seems likely that the person you saw wasn't, in fact, Inspector Gregson at all, but some other third party. No, I hate to break it to you. But the witnesses are correct. What? Just have a look at this photograph of the victim taken at the scene. Yes, that's... That's Inspector Gregson, all right. And a red hairpiece. Ah! Of course, we saw one on the floor when we investigated the scene, didn't we? Still refuse to believe Inspector Gregson wore a hairpiece, though. So then why on earth would he have been wearing something like that? The color does seem to suit the man, one might say. The photograph will be submitted as evidence, please, counsel. And what became of the trunk that the red-headed victim was supposedly carrying? I was informed that no trunk was found at the scene. So it just disappeared? What, do you expect us to have been watching the building every second, do you? We definitely saw him in the dock going in, though. No question about that. Hold it! By which, presumably, you mean the gunshot? I sell these little things, don't I? How would I know what a gunshot sounds like? Wait, what? <laughs> we all heard a big bang, by which, pre which presumably you mean the gunshot. How would I know what a gunshot sounds like? But I've always thought it probably sounds a bit like this, doesn't it? And you say that you heard the noise almost as soon as you saw the defendant here enter the building. That's right. It was almost straight away. Bang! It went, just like that. Who's a reaper, isn't he? That's what the French call a fait accompli. Is it? 
When the Reaper's around, people are going in the ground. I mean, that's what he does, isn't it? Isn't it? I think we get the message. The Reaper couldn't allow the Inspector to live after he'd discovered his secret hideout. There can be no clearer motive for the crime. Hmm, yes. It's certainly an eminently credible motive. Great. And at that point, you ran inside, is that correct? Seems... Oh, I already read that. Hold it! <clears throat> so when Gossip ran to see what had happened, did you go too? Well, me, I'm a bit hampered, see. All the signs are that that I can't move very well. You are away behind, presumably, with that sandwich board around your neck and that great big and that big sign in your hand. What a great burden you bear. Pardon me for asking, Mr. Sandwich, but is it possible you and I have met before? I'm not anybody, me. The signs are what make me who I am now. I sign, therefore I am. So, you weren't employed as an omnibus driver just under a year ago then? I might be mistaken, but I believe his trembling has intensified, Mr. Narahodo. Yes, I agree. He's clearly been through a lot. Turn down King Henry Street in the Black Widower's Arms is just there. What is this saying? Hot actual actual something. Oh dear, you've made him hide behind his sign. It's full of surprises. Hold it! So then you were the first person to arrive on the scene, is that right? That I was. Kicked the door open like a professional I did and yelled out, What's going off? What's going off? What's going off here? London. Guy, you so crazy. Lord Van Zeek's claims all he heard was a man's scream, though. And was it dark inside the room? No, not dark at all. There were candles burning on the wall. Really? And there was a fellow collapsed on the floor. Just between us, it's the first thing I noticed when I got inside. Uh, I, I see. Even though Lord Van Zeeks claims not to have seen any such lights on the wall. Next thing I noticed was someone standing right beside the body. The accused, Barak Van Zeeks. That's right, the pale-faced reaper himself. I was a little shocked, I won't deny it, but no, I'm no lily-livered coward. I stood my ground and gave that reaper a cold, hard stare myself. I keep going, though. And was there anyone else in the room at the time? No, of course not. Not at first. Then this old stiff came waddling along beside me, of course. Only him, mind. I can't handle stairs so well as you can imagine, especially on the way up. And, and couldn't you have just failed to see someone? It was a bit dingy in there, I grant you, but there were the candles on the wall and the lamp on the table. There was nowhere anyone could have been hiding. Hiding, You mark my eyes. Ugh. I was scared half to death me, so I ran off to find a copper. So you didn't run into the room with your friends? I'm not that sort of girl. I'm sorry? I'm a timid little thing, me. I was too scared to go in there. Right. I see. Old Lippy and the witch ran in there and, and I heard a sort of old lady scream. Well, that wasn't me, I swear. If I were a gentleman, I'd stake my honor on it. <laughs> I wondered what on earth was going on. Which is when you went to find a policeman? And I ran into a copper as soon as I turned the corner, so I brought him straight back to the place. Didn't I do well? 
just between us, that copper's eyes nearly popped out of his head when he saw the Reaper. I've n never felt more uncomfortable in all my life. And the defendant was arrested on the spot, I believe. Considering the catalog of killings the Reaper had carried out, it was a particularly inauspicious end. If I can't find any holes in this testimony, I'm afraid the judge will give a ruling of guilty, Mr. Naruhodo. The truth is, though, their combined testimony is fairly damning. Unfortunately, there don't seem to be any obvious problems with their statements, do there? Still, if Lord Van Zeese really is innocent, then I'm almost certain that we'll find something in there that doesn't quite add up. You don't think that one of these three could be the true culprit, do you? I don't know. What I do know is that there's more to this case that is yet to be brought to light, if you catch my drift. You have something to add, Mr. Sandwich. There's, there's really nothing to me. Empty in the head, I am just two slices with no middle. So I don't know what you could want with me. I think that maybe you just remembered something. Having heard Mr. Gossip's last statement, I mean. What I think is, we're all nothings, really. We tried to dress ourselves up as something else. At the end of the day, we're all just street sellers. That's enough out of you, Sandwich. Keep your traps shut now. Unless you want us to make you into a real sandwich. Do you want a sandwich? You're gonna get a knuckle sandwich. When he saw the Reaper, he fell clean over on his backside. That's it? Oh, you rotten beggar. I told you to keep that a secret. He screamed, he did. Screamed and scrambled off on all fours. That's all I wanted to say. Mr. Gossip, is this true? The floor was dead slippery, that's why. Planted my hand in a, a filthy pool of blood, didn't I? Yuck. What? A pool of blood? But listen here. Even when I was sprawled on the floor, I still kept giving that reaper a cold, hard stare. And don't you forget it. Just go back a little. Did you say you got blood on your hand? I, I did. I, it happens to the best of us at times, doesn't it? So I was scared, so, so I slipped over. We can j keep it just between us, can't we? No, Mr. Gossip. I'm going to have to ask you to add that to your information to your formal testimony. Oh, if, if I must. The witness will amend his testimony to include the aforementioned details at once. Slipped over and got some blood on my hands while I quickly wiped it off on the floor. Hold it! You wiped your hand on the floor? Well, who wants blood on his hand, eh? Horrible stuff. They might have thought I'd done it. Huh. And you didn't think that might be a problem? It doesn't really matter if I left a few grubby handprints on the floor. They'll get cleaned up in the end, won't they? They don't make such a fuss. That's the message from all of us. Is something wrong, Council? No, my lord. I didn't remember anything in the report about a bloody handprint on the floor. That's all. Just don't come at me with all that. You can't intimidate me. I know what I did. I wiped it off on the floor. The blood. I wonder, could that be what happened? Mr. Naruhodo? I don't have all the answers yet, but I think we may have just uncovered a vital clue. So, I can prove that he is lying because he actually wiped it on the notice board, even though we, we don't know that for sure. It could be anyone's handprint. 
So you wiped off the blood from your hand on the floor of the room. Are you quite sure about that? Well, what else do you expect me to have done, eh? Does it really matter? The police, the police found no such handprint on the floor during their investigations. What exactly is the defense asserting? If you listen, you'll find out. Prosecutor Asugi, if that's your real name. It's actually Impact. Certainly there was no bloody handprint found. On the floor? What are you trying to say? There was a handprint in blood left very clearly at the scene. On the back of this notice board. Ah. Ah. Ah! Jojo pose. Uh, yes, indeed. Indisputably a handprint in the distinctive color of blood. Ah, uh, you're dead right. That's my right hand. I'd know it anywhere. Hot Objection. actual hero. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Oh, was it not actual hero? No, it looked like an H. The witness very definitely testi very definitively testified that he wiped his hand on the floor. Any handprints on the back of the board are irrelevant. Not if the board itself had fallen over onto the floor. In that case, it's quite possible for the witness's handprint to have ended up there. Just look at the floor plan of the room. The notice board was in the opposite corner of the room to the victim, and in an upright position. Even if it had somehow been toppled and was lying on the floor at the time, bonk, it would have been a considerable distance from the body. I fell over when I came across the body, so I was basically right next to the corpse, not on the other side of the room. In other words, the defense's assertion is contradictory. Yes. It is. There's a very definite contradiction here, for which there must be a reason. I take it that you've formulated a proper hypothesis, counsel? Regarding this apparent discrepancy between the witness's account and the handprint found at the scene? I have, my lord. Uh, I actually haven't. I'll just guess. The board moving would be weird. There, like, nothing really changes if the board is elsewhere in the room. It might be false testimony. Maybe he was nowhere near the corpse, but, but that there was a pool of blood that was not near Gregson. That's my guess. The witness claims to have wiped his bloody hand on the floor, yet no sign of that remains at the scene. The simplest explanation is that the witness is lying. Just because it's the simplest explanation doesn't make it the correct one, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Ah. Positing perjury simply because it suits you. You being a disgrace to your family. Arg! I would ask you to not oversimplify matters again, Council. I don't remember fostering that kind of simplistic thinking in you. Since when were you my father? Anyway, I was always taught to consider all possibilities. Then show me. There should be a bloody handprint on the floor. So where did it go? I'm ready to give the proper explanation to the court now, my lord. Board moving? The real contradiction here is the handprint itself, not where it was found. As the court can see, it's upside down. Good gracious, so it is. If the witness had put his hand against the board, the finger should be pointing upwards. What does that tell us? It tells us one simple fact. When this handprint was made, the board must have been lying on the floor, as I previously suggested, which means that after the incident, it must have been moved. Yeah, it's not an N, that's an H. Hot. Actual hero. 
You're claiming that somebody moved the notice board after the shooting? Then tell the court who. Uh, I, I don't know that yet, but the point is... When you consider all the testimony we've heard so far, we can now be very clear on one point. And that would be... The position of the notice board at the time of the incident, my lord. So, counsel, I must ask you to clarify your assertion for the court. At the time of the incident, where do you maintain the notice board was situated? I want to say it was here, like right in front of uh, him. It was hiding him, that's why he didn't see it. And then it fell over, and then he did see it. Take that! It was right here, my lord. Goodness! No, I'm afraid I don't quite see your logic. I'm disappointed, Rinosuke. In Japan, we're taught to have patience and respect for our elders. So until his lordship sees your logic, you will know your place and not move from that spot. Uwag! How brilliant of Kazuma-sama. That almost sounded unreasonable at first, but he was just thinking of you. Unreasonable? Try unfathomable. Was it, like, in front of the door? Like, they they pushed the door open and that is what knocked the notice board over? Uh, present. Take that! It was right here, my lord. No, it was not. Wog. Is it, like, did I do it too close to the body before? The space in between the two? Take that! Oh, here we go. Man! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Robbery. Thomas had never seen such bullshit in his life. This is the only possible location. Five plank lengths to the right of where my last guess was. Immediately adjacent to your previous guess. <laughs> if the court would think back to the testimony given by the defendant earlier, he said that when he entered the room, it was dark, and he couldn't see the body. By heck! If the notice board had been here, the body would have been completely hidden from view. And the light from the candles would have been blocked, making the room appear, appear darker. But the accused also claims that the victim's body simply appeared before him. That's true. Or, in his precise words, which I wrote down, on top of the menu and the article about bird migration, just as I picked the firearm up to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. I don't know about calling it a scream, but he was talking about me, and no mistake. Because it was me that kicked the door open. If you look again at the floor plan... Consider what would happen if the door to the room was thrown open with force and the signboard happened to be in the path of the door, where, which is where I indicated. That, that can't... The door struck the notice board, knocking it over into a series of monoku <laughs> monokuma panels, making the victim's body, victim's body visible. Good gracious. My client is told nothing but the truth. He has simply described what he saw. Arg. Order, order, counsel. How has this not come to light before? After the incident, somebody must have righted the board and moved it. 
into the position where the police, myself, and my colleagues saw it when investigating the room. Witness, what have you to say for yourself? W what Me, my lord. You and your fellows were there at the scene before anybody else. It goes without saying that you must know something about the position of the notice board. The witnesses in the stand will now testify again. You will each explain exactly what you did upon arriving at the scene of the crime. Uh, stop looking over your glasses at me. I get the message. I don't know anything about that there notice board. I just wiped my hand on it, that's all. Well, don't look at me. I haven't got a clue about it. I was doing business with some second years at the time. I don't know anything about anything. I'm just a bystander, me. Just a sign at the crossroads of life. There's that Reaper, I bet. He's got a face that screams bored. That's a pun that probably worked better in Japanese. I can't see how this changes anything anyway. The detective still died when we heard the gunshot. You don't know that. Hmm. So none of you can elaborate further. Shaken by the crime they witnessed and with only the light of a few candles and an oil lamp by which to see... We can't expect these witnesses to be able to give a more precise account of what happened. That's right, yeah. It don't pay to expect too much. It's man's endless quest for knowledge that's destroying the world. That's what I think. Do you? Really. In any case, as this testimony shows, even if the notice board was moved by somebody following the incident, it makes no difference, guys. The balls were inert. When the gunshot rang out, the accused was the only person at the scene. In short, the only person who could possibly have committed this crime is Barak von Zeeks. None of this wrangling over the board changes that simple fact. Quite so, quite so. Does the defense still wish to cross-examine the witnesses, despite the circumstances? Most certainly, my lord. It's content. Very well. Then you may proceed, counsel. 